Getting a dog can be a life-changing decision, filling your days with joy and unconditional love. However, rushing into this commitment without knowing the facts and having a plan can lead to 10 to 15 years of disaster. Last year, the number of dogs surrendered to shelters increased by 63%. This number is important to us as dog trainers, and it should be important to you as a prospective dog owner, because I don't want you to contribute to this statistic. In this video, you're going to learn about the 10 things you need to consider before you ever get a puppy, and instructor Shannon is going to explain why each of these things are important to your pup. I'm Ken Steep, and welcome back to McCann Dogs. We all have busy schedules, and when you bring a puppy into your home, they're going to take a lot of time, especially during the initial stages of puppy ownership, where you're going to need to make your schedule work so that you can take care of the needs of the puppy. So ask yourself, do you have enough time? Do you have the time to make sure that you're able to let the puppy out every couple of hours to go to the bathroom? Those tiny little bladders need attention quite a bit. Do you have the time in your current schedule to be able to provide training time and attention time to a young puppy. You know, if you're busy driving the kids everywhere and sitting at their activities, the puppy is going to end up sitting at home alone, and that's not good for the start of a new puppy. Are you planning vacations anytime soon? Do you have a big work project that's going to take a lot of your attention? Consider time when you're considering bringing a puppy into your home, and make sure that there is going to be a nice chunk of time that you'll be able to dedicate to that puppy to help them get started in your life on the right track. Do you have the space for a puppy? And a lot of this will depend on what kind of puppy you get. If you get a puppy that won't take up a lot of space, say for example, you pick a breed like a toy poodle, that dog's not gonna take up a tremendous amount of space. You'll be able to fit a crate in the house or in the apartment very easily. You'll be able to fit a crate in the car to travel safely with that puppy. But if you're considering getting a Great Dane and the Great Dane has always been your dream dog, you need to think about about space. Do you have enough space in the house to contain the dog? Do you have enough space for their crate? How are you going to travel with that puppy when you need to take them to the vet, etc.? How are you going to be able to get them there? If you've got a tiny little uh, Toyota Yaris, it might not be the best match to get a Great Dane, for example. Now, living in an apartment doesn't mean that you can't have a puppy, but you do need to make sure that you plan for that as well. If you live in an apartment, you won't have access to a backyard. You'll need to make sure that you have time and you have space to get that puppy out to other locations, to be able to socialize and train and spend time with that puppy. The last thing you want to do is have a young dog just stuck and trapped inside an apartment where you don't have a yard to be able to get out and play with them. Getting out and about in the community is a really important thing and ask yourself if that's something that appeals to you or not because it's going to be really important for your young puppy and their exposure and socialization. Rescue shelters are feeling the pressure these days. Too many potential pets not enough people adopting them. Do you have a plan? And a plan is crucial. Our shelters are currently full of dogs where people didn't necessarily have a plan. You know, COVID hit and the thought was go out and get a puppy. But unfortunately, those puppies then grew into ad adult dogs. And when people didn't have a plan, they ended up in a situation where that scenario was no longer sustainable for them and the puppies ended up going to shelters and now we're paying the fallout for that. Planning is so important when it comes to your puppy. You need to plan for training, you need to plan for space, you need to plan for bills that are going to come along with the puppy and that training plan as well is really crucial to make sure that as your puppy grows you can develop a solid line of communication with them where now you can keep them from exhibiting unwanted behaviors and you can teach them how to listen and how to be a really great member of the family that you'll be able to include in everything as well. Planning is so important. If you're thinking about getting a puppy and you need a plan, check out our puppy prep guide that's going to help you figure out all of the things that you need for your new puppy. And if you've already got a puppy and you're not sure about the plan, check out our Puppy Essentials online program where you can work with the McCann instructors to get solid training advice as well as get a program that is going to help you find your feet with your new puppy. Now, those of you who are going out and buying a purebred dog from a breeder, you know that there is a cost associated with that. And that cost is a drop 
in the bucket compared to what the lifetime cost of a puppy growing into an adult dog might end up being. That first year of your puppy's life is going to be by far one of the most expensive with all of the routine checkups and of course the vaccinations and the vet care that you'll need for them. Also consider though if you like to go away with your family and you're going to be leaving the dog at home there's going to be a cost for whoever is set to care for your dog. There's going to be your monthly food bill. There's going to be any other sort of care. So think about the cost and think about as well the size of the dog because obviously a Great Dane is going to be eating a lot more than a Chihuahua and with that in mind the food bill for a Great Dane is going to be quite high compared to the food bill for a little Chihuahua for example. But costs do add up and you also want to plan for a rainy day. So if you don't end up getting pet insurance you'll want to consider putting some money aside just in case something does happen that causes you to have to put out more money than you had planned for. Another thing that is really important to consider is your current house and is it set up for a puppy? Puppy proofing is a really important part of the early stages of bringing a puppy home, making sure that there aren't things that are going to cause danger to your puppy, that those things are out of reach, that they don't have access to things that will potentially cause harm for them, but also making sure that you're set up so that your beautiful expensive white Persian rug is not going to end up being peed on by a puppy and end up being ruined or need a really big cleaning bill. Making sure that things are out of reach that might get damaged by your puppy. Puppies are destructive. They're a going force while they're young. And of course, we recommend highly that you constantly supervise your puppy to make sure that they're finding the right things and finding the right path. But it's important to note that even with that, sometimes a momentary lapse in supervision will cause the table leg to be chewed, for example, or a little corner of the rug to be chewed. So be prepared for those things. Having things like X-Pens in place and the crate and a good solid supervision plan will ensure that your house doesn't get destroyed by a young puppy. Is everybody in the home on board with getting a puppy? And those of you that have kids, this one is really going to be important for you because kids always have the best intentions and they promise the world when it comes to puppies. But you need to consider that even though they promise the moon and the stars, eventually the novelty will wear off. And it's going to be an adult in the home that needs to take responsibility for the puppy. So consider that when you're planning. Is everybody in the home on board with getting a puppy? Who's going to be doing the training? Who's got the best plan in place? Who's home the most that's going to be able to supervise and help direct the puppy and who's going to take responsibility for making sure everybody else in the home follows the same rules so that the puppy can get good solid consistent information. You'll also need to make sure that your plans carry you into the future. You know if now is a good time to get a puppy that's great but maybe two years from now you're considering a big move overseas for a new job position that won't allow you to live outside of that controlled space and therefore won't allow you to have a dog. Have you thought through to the future you know, dogs are a big commitment. 10 or 15 years, if we're lucky, you know, if everything goes well and we can keep our dogs with us for that long, that is a long time to commit. So make sure that you have, you know, plans change, things happen, we understand that, but make sure that you have an idea of what your future looks like and where the dog fits into that because you are making a big commitment. Do you have your village in place? It does take a village. You need to make sure that when you are going on vacation, you have somebody that's going to take care of your dog. Maybe when you have that puppy, you're working an eight hour work day. So who's going to come in midday to let that puppy out for a pee? You might have to consider hiring some sort of a dog walker to help you with that for the first few months until your puppy's bladder grows a little bit more. Or you might have to depend on family members or trusted friends to be able to do that. You want to be able to have your vet picked out. You want to be able to have all of the things that will be important for you and your puppy to have a great life together. You want those things in place so that once the puppy comes home, you don't have to worry about scrambling to find that aftercare or that help, you've already got an idea of who's going to help you out and where you're going to. When you bring a dog into your home, there is a huge variety that you'll have to consider. You can pick a puppy that is Chihuahua sized, or like we mentioned, you can pick a puppy that is Great Dane sized. These things are really important to consider, but also consider what the dog was bred to do. You know, if you have a low tolerance for dogs chasing things, you probably don't want to get a terrier. Maybe you 
want to get a bigger dog that doesn't have quite as high a prey drive. If you have a lifestyle that you like to come home after work and kick back and put your feet up on the couch, you probably don't want to get a working dog like a Border Collie or a Belgian Malinois. Those dogs can pretty much be full-time jobs on their own. You need to make sure that the dog you pick is going to match your lifestyle. So if it's got too much energy, you're probably going to clash and it's going to become a frustration for both of you. Working dogs that have lots of energy do not like being weekend warriors. So you'll need to have some time around your work schedule to be able to dedicate to the dog, whether it's to exercise, play, training, or just general engagement to keep that dog happy. Consider how long the dog is going to live as well when you're planning for your future events. You know, ideally, our dogs live for 15 to 20 years, but that's not always the case. So consider what you're going to be able to take in 10 years if your dog with a life expectancy of 10 years is now saying goodbye. And likewise, do you want to keep a dog for that 20 year period? We need to make sure that as much as possible, we can plan for any of these events that might throw a, uh, throw a wrench into our lives. With the purebred dog factor, you have the benefit of predictability. So you can use resources that are out there for to find a jumping off point. If you're not sure what kind of dog is going to suit your lifestyle, start with either the American or the Canadian Kennel Clubs. They both have websites where you'll find what are called breed standards. And the breed standards basically give you a little synopsis on each breed, what they were bred to do, which will help you predict their tendency, how much energy they have, how much grooming requirements they have. That's another consideration that's really important. You know, if you don't like brushing dogs, getting an old English sheepdog or an Afghan hound is really not going to suit your lifestyle. So check out those Kennel Club website sites online to start with, but then from there, go out and talk to the people that know those dogs best. Talk to breeders, talk to people who own those dogs, learn about their experiences and see how that can help you in your planning phase of which puppy and what kind of dog is gonna be the right dog to bring home for you. There is a possibility that you're shopping for the wrong pet. Dogs are a pretty heavy lift when it comes to the amount of care and the amount of attention that they will need. If you're just looking to have a companion in your home or something that you can care for that's going to care for you in return, you might want to consider a different type of pet. Dogs are fabulous, but they do require a lot of work. There are much lower lift pets that you might consider, things like cats, maybe fish or birds, depending on your lifestyle, those might require a little bit less attention from you and continue to think about dogs as something that you might add in the future when you have more time or a better plan or the right house or whatever the case may be. I love the fact that you made it all the way to the end of this video. It means you're a planner and you're exactly the kind of puppy owner that we make videos for. Now that you have a plan for picking the right puppy, you need to have a plan for that first week home. For that, watch this video. On that note, I'm Ken. Happy training.